If you're planning IUI or intrauterine insemination as a part of your fertility treatment, you are gonna wanna know exactly how to time that procedure in order to maximize success. Watch this video to learn more. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist helping people get pregnant with IUIs for almost 20 years. And a common question is how are we gonna time this IUI, Dr. Shaheen, in order to maximize success? And you are gonna learn that in this video. In this video, we're gonna go over five key components. Number one, we're gonna review what an intrauterine insemination is just really briefly. Number two, we're gonna review ovulation and how it works and how you know when you're ovulating. Number three, we're gonna go through two options on how to time the intrauterine insemination. Whether you use ovulation Richter kits or a trigger shot, you're gonna learn about the pros and cons of these two options. Topic number four, we're gonna go over the evidence. What does the evidence show what is best for you? And topic number five, I'll tell you exactly how I counsel my own patients. Now you always have to talk to your doctor about your personal situation, and I'm happy to share how I counsel my own patients. Let's get started. Topic number one, what is an intrauterine insemination? Well, an intrauterine insemination is a low tech fertility treatment. It is placing prepped and washed sperm into the uterine cavity around the time of ovulation. I've got some other videos here that tell you all about the difference between IUI and IVF. Um, I've got some shorts here that kind of show you with a model kind of how an IUI works. Um, some people call it a turkey baster because you're basically kind of having this little soft catheter go through the cervix and then the sperm, which is in a syringe, just like a little, like a milliliter, it's a really small amount, just is placed into the uterine cavity. Um, so that's the basics. That is what an intrauterine insemination is. And it's considered low-tech fertility treatment because another type of fertility treatment is IVF, in vitro fertilization, where you're getting eggs out of the body and you're fertilizing them in the lab. And then when the embryo is ready, you're using a catheter, but you're putting an embryo into the uterine cavity. IUI is low-tech because the egg and sperm are still finding each other in the body. And it can be a wonderful option for a lot of fertility issues. Topic number two, ovulation. A little recap. So ovulation is the point in the menstrual cycle where the egg comes out of the ovary, goes into the fallopian tube, and that's hopefully where it meets the sperm, fertilizes, turns into an embryo, and implants and becomes a beautiful baby. I know it doesn't happen every single time, but that's what we're talking about. The middle of the menstrual cycle when the egg comes out of the ovary and it's ready to meet the sperm. So I've got some great videos here on YouTube that talk all about how ovulation works. But basically the first half of the menstrual cycle, the egg is maturing and getting ready. The fluid and the follicle is getting bigger and bigger. And when the estrogen level reaches a certain threshold, it talks to the pituitary gland and the pituitary gland releases a hormone called luteinizing hormone to signal to the ovary it is time to release that egg. So it's this amazing communication between the ovary, the pituitary gland, back to the ovary. And that luteinizing hormone, that is the hormone that you, if you are using ovulation predictor kits or you're peeing on a stick to see when you're ovulating, it's actually showing you when that luteinizing hormone is present in your body. And that means that the egg is gonna get released in about 24, 36 hours. Topic number three, options for timing your IUI and the pros and cons. So there really are two options for timing your intrauterine insemination. One is using ovulation predictor kits at home. And the other option, option number two, is to time with an ultrasound as well as a trigger shot to cause the release of the egg. So there, there are pros and cons to this. So ovulation predictor kits, um, you can do at home and you basically check that kit. You're expecting it to be negative earlier in your cycle. And then around the time of ovulation, you'll see the stick turn positive. You know that your pituitary gland is creating that luteinizing hormone to signal ovulation. Call the clinic and we will do the intrauterine insemination the next day. Pros of this is less visits to the clinic and typically lower cost. Cons are sometimes those sticks don't work. Um, you have to have predictable and regular menstrual cycles. And you have to know that they work for you. Um, sometimes you can get frustrated. You can kind of have negatives and then all of a sudden it's past the window of ovulation and you've missed your opportunity for an intrauterine insemination, but that's pretty rare. 
Um, so I feel like the pros are lower cost and less visits, um, but the cons are you really have to make sure that this works for you um, and that it's pretty predictable for your particular situation. The alternative is doing ultrasounds in the middle of the cycle and looking for signs on the ultrasound that somebody is ready for ovulation and then making it happen with the trigger shot. So on the ultrasound, you look at the ovaries and the eggs. You can't ever see eggs. They're single cells. They're super small, but they're in these pockets of fluid called follicles. And as the egg is maturing, the fluid and the follicle gets bigger and bigger. And when the follicle measures about 18 to 20 millimeters, maybe a little bit more, you know that the egg inside is mature. Other things that we look at on a mid-cycle ultrasound are the uterine lining. You want to make sure it's nice and thick and looks receptive. So you can use these ultrasound findings to time when to give the trigger shot. The trigger shot is mimicking what your pituitary gland makes. And your body thinks that it's getting luteinizing hormone from the pituitary gland, but it's going to make the egg release, make you ovulate, and then you can time the intrauterine insemination after that trigger shot. So the pros of this is it's, you know, you're not having to check the sticks at home. You kind of are getting this information and feedback from the clinic. You're helping to watch things closely. This is a great option for people with irregular menstrual cycles or ovulation issues. A lot of times people with PCOS, the ovulation predictor kits just do not work. And it's really nice sometimes to even just get that feedback that, oh, I see that the follicle is there. My lining looks good. This is great. Um, another positive is that the trigger shot actually stays in your system for at least seven days. And it encourages your own ovaries to make their own uh, progesterone and estrogen. So a little bit more hormonal support in the luteal phase. Yeah, the cons of doing it is it's another visit. So it's more expensive fertility treatment option. Uh, and then it's another medication, you know, it's a shot. Um, so some of people really don't like that. Uh, so it is more intervention. It can be more expensive, but I do think you're getting some information from that ultrasound. Topic number four. Okay, we've talked about the two options, the pros and cons. What does the evidence say? Well, the ASRM or the American Society of Reproductive Medicine put out this really interesting review article, this practice guideline talking about evidence surrounding treatment for unexplained infertility. And in this, they reviewed very specifically um, seven randomized control trials that were looking at how to time intrauterine inseminations and tried to answer the question, you know, is, you know, LH kits or home ovulation predictor kits better or are doing the ultrasound and the trigger shot and you know more intervention is that better um, and they really helped kind of combine the evidence that's out there and come up with a summary to give us some information and some guidelines they came up with several recommendations one of which is there's really not a reason to do more than one insemination in a cycle. So it used to be years ago that people would ask for two intrauterine inseminations, like back to back, one day apart as a way to try to get more sperm where it needs to go and just kind of not miss the egg and this ovulation. And they say really the evidence does not show that doing back to back or more than one inseminations is beneficial or helping to increase pregnancy rates. It's really just an extra cost to the patients. And this does not make sense. Another finding is looking at the timing of the trigger shot and when to do the intrauterine insemination. Most clinics will do the intrauterine insemination about 24, 36 hours after the trigger shot. Um, and a couple of studies really have not shown that there's a dramatic difference in success rate based on the timing between the trigger shot and the intrauterine insemination. I do think most clinics will try to optimize that timing based on the medication and how we know how it works in the body but it is reassuring to patients that are super nervous about like oh i have to get the shot at this exact time in order to get the maximum benefits of the iui um, these studies are really reassuring that there's a lot of um, variation a little bit of grace period and this timing and i hope it will decrease people's stress about trying to get exact timing and finally the recommendation is that there's really not strong evidence that doing an ultrasound with a trigger shot increases success rates above and beyond timing with ovulation predictor kits at home, as long as people have regular and predictable menstrual cycles and ovulation predictor kits work for them. 
So that's reassuring as well. I mean, it, it can be burdensome to patients to schedule another visit um, and pay for that ultrasound and pay for the trigger shot. And so just knowing that options are available to people and it can be an open discussion with your doctor and your personal situation um, is really encouraging. Um, topic number five, how do I counsel my patients? Well, I go through all of the options. Certainly if someone has ovulatory issues, irregular menstrual cycles, they've got PCOS and OPK kits or ovulation predictor kits at home do not work, then those people, I highly recommend timing their IUI with an ultrasound and a trigger shot and intrauterine insemination. Um, if somebody has regular predictable menstrual cycles and ovulation predictor kits work for them, I really talk about both options. I think that there are several benefits from doing the ultrasound. I like to see that the uterine lining looks great. I like to see that the follicle is getting to a certain size. Um, I like the idea that the trigger shot stays around for about a week and improves endogenous progesterone and estrogen levels during the Leo phase. So I do like the ultrasound with the trigger shot, but I talk to people about both options and we kind of go through. Some people are really um, stressed about missing work. Um, they really hate shots. Um, and if they have regular predictable menstrual cycles and ovulation predictor gets work for them, we definitely talk about that as an option. And we might sort of say, hey, let's try a couple of IUIs with timing it with the ovulation predictor kit. And you know what? If it's not successful, we've got something else that we can add to the treatment and we can just do that if we need to. So it's really personalized. It's a thorough discussion between myself and my patient. Um, I hope you really learned something from this video. I think it's important to realize what the evidence shows and to realize that there's often different options and different pathways for people. And I hope you've kind of learned something that you can advocate for your own care um, and timing for your own intrauterine insemination. Like this video if you learned something, comment with any questions that you have, be sure and subscribe to this channel for your weekly reproductive health video. And as always, wishing you love, luck, and pineapples.